have two fantastic guests today, Nick Grimmy Grimshaw and Nicola Adams. Uh, really? Oh my God. He's, He's a, a disco, disco dancing, Oscar, Oscar Wilde reading. We're like sexaholics or really evil characters. Maybe gays aren't that basic. <laughs> oh! Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to Pride Video Club with Prime Video. Um, I'm Raven Smith and we are talking about gay representation in the media. And who better to join me than two legends? Olympic boxing gold medalist Nicola Adams and Radio One Drive Time presenter Nick Grimmy Grimshaw. Hi. I'm Raven. Ready to dive into the well of gayness that we are going to be doing. Your shirt looks like you're ready to die. You're well okay. <laughs> so guys, in 20 seconds, can you tell me which LGBT film you would take with you to a desert island? I would take The L Word. I, I absolutely love this TV show because it's a good representation of, of lesbians. And there isn't, I don't think there's, there's ever been a show like it. It shows the ups and downs, the real problems um, that the LGBT community go through. And I, I just think it's an absolutely great, um, amazing Tw show. 20 seconds! Oh, oh no! <laughs> it was spot on. It's such a like iconic series. Do you think anything else has even come close to it in terms of lesbian representation? Nah, definitely, definitely not. I think um, I think we need we need another one. Welcome to our world. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to the fold. The film I would like to take to a desert island is Moonlight. Um, simply because I I loved everything about it. I loved the story. I loved the journey. It was sort of really idyllic and terrifying and heartbreaking and it sort of I don't know I thought it was reflective of life when you're trying to discover your sexuality and navigate through that whole um coming to terms with it and masculinity and what even is it? Three seconds! It's like one of my most favorite films of all time. Who is you man? I ain't seen you in like a decade. At some point you gotta decide for yourself who you gonna be. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. So in entertainment, how well do you think gay people are represented at the moment? I was growing up thinking like that LGBT people were a minority and that's why I didn't see myself reflected in TV and film. And I think when I did, it was always like the, the butt of a joke or yeah. like a, a camp character or like a silly character. Yeah, like back in the day, there wasn't a lot at all. And um, I think it's supposed to be the stats are one in three people are supposed to be bisexual or, you know, gender fluid, whatever. And mm. when you think about the stats in that respect, you'd think there'd be a lot more representation. There has been a, um, quite a few more now. There's Batwoman, um, Ruby Rose. She's actually a, a lesbian in in that TV show, which I thought was really good to see. A, she's a she's a superhero, and not only a superhero, but she's a lesbian superhero as well. I thought that was uh, really really awesome to see. Actually, is she the main character in the show? Yeah, she's the the yeah, main character. Interesting. What are some of the kind of trope of gays being shown in media that you think are a little bit tired? It's always the gay best friend that's really into fashion. There's so much more diversity, and I think everybody's just kind of got stuck on that one sort of cliche. Oh, Sex in the City? When they made the film, they just got the two completely different gay characters married. Yeah. It's like the only two gays yeah. in the whole thing. They <laughs> just married them off. <laughs> they have nothing this is what we'll do. <laughs> because I swear throughout the TV series, they hated each other. And then they were like, oh, we're getting married. They did have Liza Minnelli do all the single ladies at their wedding. You always represent as like either sexaholics or really evil characters or we're like really into fashion. Love the bag, love the shoes, love everything, love it. Thank you. Yeah, you never see like a gay notebook, do you? Where it's just yeah, like, yeah. but maybe gays aren't that basic. <laughs> oh! I would run out and get some aloe vera, pal, because you just get burned. It's just well, it's <laughs> yeah. longing, isn't it? That's part of the brilliant thing about Call Me By Your Name is that they long for each other. They don't just have sex straight away, which is how gayness can typically be portrayed. It's about time that we did have more movies and more TV shows involving gay characters and have them as lead roles as well because it's almost like we've been hidden away as something that doesn't exist. When you'll see LGBT community in your day-to-day -day life, because we are here and, you know, we're not going away, so... I'd like to think that we've progressed as societies that we could handle watching 
some gays or some lesbians. <laughs> yeah. Moonlight made like 65 million and then won the Oscar. And wow. the same with like Call Me By Your Name. I think both of those films were like two of the most talked about, if not the most talked about films of that year. Hopefully that means that Hollywood will be less scared of, you know, telling a gay story or a trans story or a lesbian story. Do you think mm. that there should be more gay people playing gay characters? I mean, mm. I can see the argument. I think if there was, um, you know, n never the opportunity for gays to play gays, then, then yes. Well, it's probably like more of a case of Hollywood wants actors to be seen as like, I am a masculine man. There'd be so many actors, naming no names, that are like closeted and they don't think that they can be gay because they think, oh, I can't be like a gay Batman. Like, because yeah. Batman's got to be like masculine, but why can't a gay man be masculine? That's like the kind of stereotypes that we need to, we need to change. So you've both got a film or TV show you want to share with the group. So we're going to have a look at them now and have a chat. I've gone for the scene in Call Me By Your Name, where uh, Timothy Chalamet, Elio, talks to his dad. I can't ever remember having this reaction um, mm. to a film ever in my life. How you live your life is your business. Just remember, our hearts and our bodies are given to us only once. And before you know it, your heart's worn out. And as for your body, there comes a point when no one looks at it. Much less wants to come near it. Uh... Wow, that's me. <laughs> Why have I never seen this movie? I'm watching this tonight. Oh my Definitely god, you that. are gonna you need gotta all watch of the Kleenex. It. it is devastating and it's yeah. so romantic and quite like it's just simmers. It's beautiful. The L word. So I've chose the scene where um, Bet and Tina, the characters in the L word, Tina's just had the baby, Bet's trying to adopt, and the social worker um, is there and she's like, well, you know, you need a, a male role model. What about men? Men. You do know that we're lesbians, right? Yes. That matter was fairly explicitly touted on your petition to the state, which is all the more reason why I find the man question critical. How is Angelica going to know what a man is? Will she ever rub her cheek up against a scratchy, unshaven face? Oh! oh like, that's I mean, a good sexy turn. Do you know what I'm <laughs> like, there's, there's so many things wrong with it. Yeah. <laughs> there's so many things wrong with that. We need to have an investigation <laughs> into that lady. It's so interesting what you're saying about this assumptions that we just was like 2.4 children, man and woman, happily married. It's just, it's, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. I think you'd be hard pressed to go a day without bumping into See, any man. A man. Yeah. Seeing yeah. a man somewhere. <laughs> so have you heard of the Vito Russo test? It's basically like a gauge of whether or not a film is representative of LGBT. There's three criteria. Number one, the film has to contain a character that is identifiably gay, lesbian, bisexual, and or transgender. Part two, the character must not be solely or predominantly defined by their sexual orientation or gender identity. And number three is the character must be tied into the plot in such a way that removal of them would be significant. And I'm going to give you a series of films and we're going to assign whether or not they pass the Vito Russo test. Clueless, would this pass the test? So this must be the elusive Christian. 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 And she tries to seduce him. Oh yeah, and the whole thing is like, he's impeccably dressed and he likes to watch Spartacus. Oh he's yeah, like yeah. Spartacus or he's something. become one of my favorite shopping partners. He does dress better than I do. What would I bring to the relationship? Oh my God, yeah, and it's got the line when they're driving on the freeway of like, he's, he's a, a disco, disco dancing, dancing. Oscar, Oscar Wilde read it, tries and to get hold in, friend of Dorothy. Dorothy. He's gay. Yes, even. So is he defined by sexuality? I mean, he's not sort of central. Because <laughs> it's based on Emma, and I don't think Jane Austen, is it Jane Austen? Wrote a gay character for her. Yeah, they, yeah, they didn't exist then. They were no, invented in the same yeah. <laughs> Next one, Mean Girls. See, this is the color I want. This is Damien. He's almost too gay to function. The outcasts are considered to be like a girl who likes guitar music. 
and um, the gay guy who's Damien. So he yeah. came out like 10 years later after the film was made. I mean, he is a fantastic character in that film and he has some of the funniest and most memorable lines. Oh, for you, Glenn Coco, you go, Glenn Coco. Do you think he's solely and predominantly uh, defined by his sexual orientation? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so that it's, it's failed the test. Yeah, because he kind of is, right? Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Do you know what? I've never watched any Harry Potter. You just bought yourself a month's detention. Nicola, do you know any gay characters in Harry Potter? Yeah, uh, Dumbledore. Something to think about. He's retroactively been outed. But I, I think... <laughs> yeah, you can't... Yeah, that one wins because you, you couldn't take out Dumbledore. No, no, okay. He's like, he's like one of the... But he's not out. He's not out. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, he's not out. Everyone's favourite film, Thor Ragnarok. Yay! <laughs> so the bisexual character in this film, I didn't know they were until um, I interviewed them. It is Tessa Thompson. Does it have an out character? In the film, I don't think you'd know that she's out, but if you're a super fan of those films, then you would yeah, know. Yeah, the, the Valkyrie were, were, yeah, they used to, yeah. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> a, little, a little son of Thomas for the Valkyrie. And she's, she's not defined by her sexuality. And would the film be ruined if she was taken out? Yeah, for sure. So that's yeah. it, it's passed the test. It's probably the only one. Yeah. So we asked people on Twitter who they thought should be added to the LGBTQI plus Hall of Fame. Here are their suggestions. I do drink red wine, but I also drink white wine. I like the wine and not the label. Does that make sense? The Hall of Fame is being constructed as we speak. Thank you so much for joining me today. See you soon. Do I want yeah. to say see you soon? Yeah. yeah. Do I want to say yeah, see you soon? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. See you later. Yeah. Sayonara. Uh, Bonsoir. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> Leaves me to yeah. Join us on Prime Video for a load more Pride events. We're still supporting the brilliant charity Mermaids and the equally as brilliant charity Mind Out. You can support them too by clicking on the links below. I have been Raven Smith. This has been Pride Video Club. Thank you for tuning in. Oh.